I'm going to be talking about everybody's favorite subject, but first I want to ask a question. Um, yeah, how can we work together over the internet while staying in control over our data? And that question, of course, becomes more interesting when you factor in AI development. On one hand, AI creates a bigger hunger for data from the big tech companies in particular. You need a lot of data to train AI. I don't think I need to tell any of you that. Uh, on the other hand, it also means more risks of leaking data and abuse of our data. So my name is Jos, um, one of the co-founders at Nextcloud, and I will be talking a little bit about AI. I first talk quickly about Nextcloud and what we are up to. Um, and then I want to talk about AI, pros, cons, um, and the approach that we are taking to it. So we at Nextcloud don't want to live in a world where five big tech companies control everything. And that's sadly more or less where we are today. That's not great. So we are building, or have built, the most advanced collaboration platform that you can run on-premise. This allows you to keep your data yours. Um, it's, of course, completely open source and transparent. And this means with Nextcloud, companies and individuals can regain control over their data. Now, for us, Nextcloud is a mission, it's a goal. Um, so we work in an open way on this. Um, and it's very effective. There are thousands of companies, well, tens of thousands, I would say, um, smaller ones, but also thousands of bigger organizations, governments, universities, etc., that are using Nextcloud already. Um, some of our biggest installations have literally tens of millions of users on a single Nextcloud instance. And there are about half a million Nextcloud servers on the internet. So there are a lot of people using Nextcloud today. And that's great. And as I said, we build this in the open, transparent, with our community. And yeah, luckily this is working fairly well. As a company, we're independent. We're not venture capital backed. We grow independently. Roughly 80%, well, last year we grew by about 80%. It varies a bit, um, but it's uh, growing pretty quickly. Of course, we're still tiny compared to the companies that we are trying to go up against, uh, the Microsofts, the Googles of this world. Um, but we don't need to overtake them to make an impact. Our goal is to have a credible alternative, and we are there, I think. The main problem right now is that mostly the politicians don't know about it. So let's talk about AI. We introduced a bunch of AI features over the last years at Nextcloud, but it is a bit of a complicated issue. So I think AI has a ton of opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of talk about this. Uh, it, it can help you, you know, do tasks that are otherwise repetitive or boring. Um, I mean, I, I think most of you are aware of some of the things AI can do. But of course, at the same time, there are a ton of challenges. Uh, there are problems around environmental, about privacy, about more centralization. Um, it's a pretty big list. And this is not just for individuals, it's also for businesses. I imagine you are a uh, car maker like BMW, um, and your team working on a new car is having a discussion about it on, say, a Zoom call. Yeah, and in, in the site, there is an AI that's listening to the call and making a nice summary of it. But if that data is later used to train another AI, obviously when, say, Tesla is having a call about cars and is asking for suggestions on how to make them better, some of the training data from BMW can leak. So you need to be quite careful with, you know, yeah, leaks that can be caused by the use of a variety of AI things. And this stuff is happening. That's why companies like Goldman Sachs and, and Samsung and others, they're block they forbid the use of AI by their employees because it's leaking data and, you know, they know this. And companies like Twitter and Zoom who want this data to train their AIs, they have silently changed their terms of service to allow training on AI on your data. In a couple of cases that caused a big uproar and people, because people noticed. In other cases, people just didn't notice. And, yeah, they'll probably do it again in a while, you know, after people stop paying attention. So there's a ton of issues. And so what do you do? I mean, there are a lot of opportunities. I mean, you have basics like, you know, the, the, the text to image and image recognition. 
Um, it can help you deal with a ton of information overload, basically. Summarizing is one of the things that, for example, large language models are pretty good at. If you ask them questions, they tend to hallucinate stuff. But if you just ask them to summarize, summarize uh, a, a long lap of text, uh, a book, a, um, a paper, um, a chat room, uh, email thread, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty effective. They usually pick out the good stuff. So it's quite helpful with that. Um, and of course, you have translations, uh, text-to-speech. There are a lot of areas where these technologies can help you. I've seen some really interesting demos for data analysis. Um, I haven't seen it in action real life, mostly on the videos from Google and Microsoft. But it looked really impressive, where they basically have a spreadsheet with data, and then just ask questions from the AI, like, hmm, why are the sales in this and this country so high? And then the AI basically creates a, a graph showing the causes and, and where the sales come from, and say, oh, it's this specific product that's being sold a lot in this country. Like, this stuff is really wildly impressive, I think. And I'm kind of looking forward to these things. It, it can help you, you know, with a ton of stuff. Um, a thing that was brought up in an earlier presentation of mine is also accessibility. I mean, if you have um, yeah, limitations now, you interact with a computer, you know, maybe eyesight issues or you know, uh, input limitations, then AI can help in like, really crazy ways. And I think that, that we in the tech community, we basically can't, yeah, we can't afford not to try and build on these things and use it to make people's lives easier in many ways. And if you say, well, pff, I don't care, that's fine. Um, but that'll probably just mean that your product won't be used anymore. So, you know, again, I, I don't think there's too much of a choice. There's a lot of stuff it can do, like um, a few quick examples of Nextcloud. I mentioned the summarizing. So we summarize emails. Um, this is not correct. Sorry for that. Yes, so we put the summary on top. Um, we have like the ability to select some text and then you know do a couple of things like make a headline, summarize, etc. Um, so these kind of features are really, yeah, quite helpful I think for people already in their day-to-day -day work. Um, I mentioned the data analysis thing, which I think is, yeah, really interesting, and AI are evolving now in a way that they can even do stuff for you. So you can, I mean, you already have stuff like Siri and other assistants that you can say, hey, set a timer, uh, or, you know, um, warn me when, you know, I get to this place, do not forget that. Um, but with AI, you can, of course, go a lot further and say, hey, you know, change the, uh, all the slides uh, and change the fonts in my presentation to something else which otherwise you have to manually do. I spent some time yesterday <laughs> trying to fix fonts. <laughs> it's a bloody nightmare. And just being able to tell the AI to do it, I really look forward to such functionality. So that's cool. Now, in a company, as I said, at Nexart, we've been doing AI stuff. Um, and so we have an AI team. And well, because of that, I want to talk for a minute about weasels. So the head of our AI team, her name is Daphne. Uh, she comes from a background of uh, research, ethics research in technology. Uh, and she's pretty skeptical of the uh, big tech approach to AI in general, um, privacy, etc. And she has introduced a rule in her team, because in her team are six, seven people, mostly coming from an AI background, you know, PhDs in AI development and stuff. And so when these team members see a problem, they think, ooh, AI can do it. Yeah? They are pretty positive about the technology. And I think it's really nice to have a team lead who's a little more skeptical. So the rule that she introduced is that whenever you want to propose something to be done by AI, you have to replace the word AI by trained weasel. And you have to keep in mind that the weasels are racist and sexist. So let's give a couple of examples. So should you use a trained weasel, to generate an image for your playlist on YouTube Music. I think it's fine. Should a trained weasel drive a few tons of steel over the highway? I'm not a big fan of that at the moment. And should a trained weasel decide who gets hired or who gets fired in a company? I mean, they're racist and sexist. Are you kidding me? This really shouldn't be a thing, and it unfortunately is. 
Uh, there are tons more examples. I mean, in the US, judges are using AI to help them decide um, if it is safe to release people um, or well, keep them in prison longer. A um, little bit of testing has shown that the accuracy of this is about 60%, plus the thing is racist. I mean, why don't you then just flip a coin if you're using an AI in that way? Yeah? Um, there's, been, uh, there's a lot of work happening on robots, um, and the people who are building this, they're also just not thinking very much about the risks here. Uh, there's an example where there's a package delivery robot being built, and so it's been designed to detect people and walk around them, and there's a big red button that makes it stop. That sounds fairly safe, except is it going to walk over your dog or your cat? How is it going to deal with people in a wheelchair? And what if it gets stuck in a fire escape and there's a fire? You know, like there's tons of risks of these things that you know, people don't think about directly who are developing it. And it's a bit similar in my feeling to like how security has evolved. Uh, 30 years ago, software was not developed with security in mind. Today, this is a little better. I think we're still far away. And if you look at how quickly AI is developing and what an impact it can have on our lives, just imagine that it's going to take another 30 years before AI applications are developed with these risks in mind. Yeah, I mean, there are going to be a lot of them. I mean, even today, the amount of damage that's being done by all the technologies that we're using that were not developed with security first in mind, I don't want to know the amount of damage AI can do over the 30 years that it takes us to start thinking about this seriously. So there's really an issue. Um, Daphne said at some point, um, you know, that uh, people told her, well, okay, you're being really critical. You're throwing away the baby with the bathwater. And her response was like, well, that might not be bad. It depends a little on the baby. And there are definitely some that, you know, are problematic. But more importantly, I mean, especially if you look at the big tech firms working on this stuff. I mean, we're not really talking about a baby anymore. We're talking about an adult that we already know is violating our privacy and security every day. So, yeah, I think there's a lot we need to do with AI. We can do and should. But at the same time, we really, really need to be very careful. So in NextCloud, we have an approach internally, uh, which we call ethical AI because we like to give stuff names. Um, and we can't fix, of course, all the problems inherent to AI. Um, but at the same time, at least we can be transparent about it. And so this is the core concept behind our approach to AI. Try and be as transparent as possible. So we created a rating system, which uses, you know, from red to green. Um, and it's based on three factors that are important, I think, for AI and the concerns around it. So first, it answers the question if the code is open source. So that means you can, you know, adapt the code. You can retrain it, perhaps, if there are problems, maybe to optimize the energy usage or to do something about a certain bias. Second, the training model should be freely available. Uh, that means you can actually run it on-prem on your own system. So you know there's no data leaks, that your data is not being used for training, your data doesn't go to a foreign country, perhaps. And last but not least, the training data itself should be ideally available. Because if you want to retrain the model, uh, or even just look for bias, you need to be able to have access to the training data, otherwise you just don't know. It's a black box, right? I mean, these things are just a big table with values between zero and one. So, that was our approach, and now, you get insight as a user in the AI technology that you choose to use, but of course you need to have a choice then. So we tried to develop all these AI integrations in a way that you have a choice. Yeah, you can choose in the user interface which model or which technology you want to use for translation, you know, what you want to use for text-to-speech, what you want to use as large language model, and so on and on. So, our approach, as is, I think, rather obvious given our background, is, of course, to focus on open source and on-prem solutions. But we also have integrations with a variety of SaaS solutions, including ChatGPT, because, you know, for some use cases, perhaps it's fine to send your data there. 
Um, but for other use cases, it's not. And for that, you can run models on-prem yourself. We support a ton of models. Um, pretty much most things on the market. Um, I think we're using local AI, which uses an open AI-like API uh, that you can run locally, the local AI thing, I mean, and you can hook most models in there. Uh, we also have support for a couple of other things. I don't know too many of the uh, details here, but you can always ask and see what, uh, uh, if I have a clue or not. So for a lot of people at the moment, it's unfortunately still really hard to run AI. I mean, if you've experimented with it yourself, you know it's pretty slow, pretty heavy. And that's also true for smaller companies in particular, and they are usually not really ready to order a few hundred K worth of GPUs from NVIDIA. Um, so what we have done is we've worked with a couple of partners of ours, including IONOS, OVH Cloud, and also Plus Server, to develop an AI as a service model. So they offer basically a bunch of AI models on their systems. They have the GPUs for that. You can then say, okay, I want to use maybe Llama model, and I want to use, you know, Whisper, etc. cetera. Uh, you connect to the next cloud, and then it sends the data there. So Still, it's not as good as keeping it on your own server, but it's better than sending it to Microsoft, pretty much. Uh, so there's at least a, a bit of a middle ground choice here. Certainly, if you just want to experiment and see if AI is useful in your company before, again, you invest in God knows how much in hardware, uh, this is a better solution, I think, than ChatGPT. So this covers three things. Um, but of course, there are many more problems with AI. Yeah? We're not talking here about discrimination and bias. We're not talking here about the energy usage of the models. Um, the reasons we did that is simply because these are really quite hard to quantify. Yeah, if you give me two models and you say, hey, which one uh, discriminates more? Because they all do, of course, in many ways. I mean, I can't give you a red-green answer to that that I can use in my rating. And the same goes for power usage. I mean, you can say, well, this one is more efficient. That's great. But there might be another one that's even more efficient. We don't know. So these and, and other things, we are currently just not, you know, uh, taking into account. But yeah, I mean, the weasels are racist and sexist and biased in every way. There's just only so much we can do to, to show that to people. Um, so we do want to expand um, our rating in time, um, but we don't yet yeah, have any uh, big changes coming. Uh, but in general, I would always keep in mind that, you know, while weasels are racist and sexist, yes, humans are too, but humans can learn, humans can compensate, and the weasels don't. So with that in mind, I want to show you a couple of ways that we've used AI in Nextcloud. Um, we have a ton of these things. So we already used various machine learning things um, quite some years ago. For example, we uh, train um, on uh, login data to get basically an idea of... Uh, ah, one minute left. Okay, there won't be a lot of examples then. Um, yeah, train on login data to see whether, you know, uh, you might be logging in normally every day from 9 to 5 from the office, and then suddenly on Saturday night there's a login from... I don't know, China, uh, it'll spit out a warning and say, hmm, that's weird, maybe you should block that login. Um, we have stuff like uh, smart inbox, um, image object recognition, music recognition. This one is yellow because the music itself is from Spotify, so that's not really open. Um, we... Um, ah, yeah, call transcript generation, uh, speech to text. I mean, I already showed you a few things. Uh, you know, background blur, uh, translations, first Deepl, but now we also have it uh, running on your own system. Um, we have the Nextcloud Assistant, which is basically an interface to this, so you can just click on there, you will get a dialogue where you can give a pre-prompt um, and get some stuff back, and this can then run, as I said, on-premise. We integrated this in a ton of places, um, like in Nextcloud Text. Um, you can basically select a piece of text. I already showed you this earlier. We have it in mail, you know, with these summaries. Um, we also suggest... Please play, yes. So we also suggest replies, for example. 
or when you go in and you create a calendar event out of an email, it will basically propose a description and a title for the calendar meeting. Like little things, as I said, summaries, pretty safe. I don't think the weasels can screw up too much there. Um, an extra talk, we uh, you know have tra call transcripts, translations, uh, image generation, all these kind of things, a chatbot you can talk to. And there's a lot more happening. Um, but I think we're at the end of time, so maybe it's better to see if there are any questions. You can also look me up later, I uh, can chat about this, and you can tell me how evil it is or is not. No questions? Well, I think I will just stop it here then. Um, thank you very much. I will show a few more AI thingies maybe later in my talk about Nextcloud in general. Um, thanks all for your attention.